Welcome to a video tutorial of Auction RPM. My name is Dan Zumwalt and I'll be your guide through this Master Data video that we'll be considering now. Master Data is a classification of data that is used inside of Auction RPM. Master Data can be referred to as Master Tables or Foundational Table Data that is, that is used on a day-to-day -day basis and this kind of data supports the day-to-day -day operation of Auction RPM. To illustrate what we're talking about, let's go to Tools and then Master Data. Now here in the Master Data screen, you'll notice that there is a Master Table list in the upper left portion of this screen. Here in this list, you'll notice a myriad of tables that can be managed all from this single location. For instance, let's click on Buyers. The buyers table in this sample data contains three records that are available here. We have Biome at Hyam Company, we have Joe Buyer, and we have Susie Smith. You'll notice that when I click on the different buyers that are listed here at the bottom of the screen, these buyers, whichever one I'm, I have highlighted here, is shown in the upper right portion of this screen. So because I have Susie Smith highlight, highlighted here, I'm now looking at the details for Susie Smith's buyer record. What I'll do is I'll hit edit here so that it'll light up the fields here on Susie Smith's record. You'll notice that while I am editing Susie Smith's record, I can click anywhere else in the program and nothing will change. I can't exit the screen, can't print reports, can't do anything else. My focus is on Susie Smith's buyer record. Now on this buyer record, you'll notice that we have several tabs going across the top here. Right now I'm working on the general tab, which contains the name, address, city, state, zip, phone number, uh, secondary phone, fax number, driver's license, and email address. Under the details tab for Susie Smith, I have an indication as to whether or not Susie is taxable. And if she wasn't taxable, this is where we could record her tax ID. This indicates if we are to include Susie whenever we print out mailing labels. If I click on the Foreign tab, here's a, here are several fields that I could fill out if I so choose to regarding Susie Smith if she was a foreign buyer. The Security tab has some very important fields here that you may want to make use of. For instance, here at the top I have a check mark indicating Account Frozen. Under Account Frozen, if I check this checkbox and I put in the reason for freeze, that the fact that uh, Susie Smith has bounced a check, then the next time that Susie Smith comes in to register for an auction, the bidder registration clerk will be prohibited from registering Susie, and it'll tell her that her account has been frozen. And it will tell her that the reason for the freeze is this right here. Now this, can, this field can be used, or this capability can be used for an antagonistic reason, such as what I just mentioned, or perhaps a non-antagonistic reason. Maybe they, the last time that we sent a mailer to Susie Smith, that mailer came back as having a bad address. Well, by marking the account as frozen and putting this reason for freeze here, uh, then it will indicate to the bidder registration clerk that Susie Smith's buyer record needs to be augmented with additional information as to an accurate address. What I'll do in this case is I will go ahead and remove this reason for freeze and the account frozen. You'll also notice that there is a bidder registration message here and an invoicing message. The bidder registration, registration message is simply a message that is displayed to the bidder registration clerk and it would be information that the clerk needs to know or should know as they're registering this person. Maybe this person is a VIP and you want to make sure that the uh, registration clerk knows that they're a VIP and maybe there's a special thing that is done for your B VIP buyers. The invoicing message is a message that is displayed to the invoicing clerk and perhaps a good use of this would be that you would indicate to the invoicing clerk that checks are okay from Susie Smith here. 
There are several more tabs here and several more pieces of information that can be entered in and maintained for Susie Smith. And once I have all of that information entered, I would hit save. And now that information has been saved now for Susie Smith. Now I've been concentrating on the buyer's table, but again, here in Master Data, there is a myriad of other tables that could be uh, examined. For instance, if I click on consigners, here's a listing of consigners that have been entered into the system. If you wish to add additional consigners, then all you need to do is press the new button here and as the tooltip indicates this will allow you to enter a new record. If I click on consignment fee codes this shows us that we have only one consignment fee code defined at the present time and that is a fee code that is 35 percent. Now it's interesting to note about these consignment fee codes and the same holds true for uh, our buyer premium codes and our tax definitions if I edit this consignment fee code, the first thing that it will do is it will give me this message saying that if I wish to make changes, those changes will affect all past, present, and future auctions that use this code. And rather than editing this record, please consider adding a new code. Well, because this is a brand new installation, I'm not going to worry too much about that. But in the future, if I have used this consignment fee code for other auctions, then I would certainly want to uh, just simply add in a new consignment fee code. Let's say I'm charging 25% uh, in the future on some items. I'd want to enter a new consignment fee code defining 25% rather than changing this one from 35% to 25%. The reason why is because if I enter in inventory now, using this code that says that I'm charging 35%, then let's suppose later I change this code number one to say 25%. Well, what I've effectively done is I've effectively changed all the historical inventory that is that was marked as being charged 35%. And I've changed it now, those history records down to 25%. And certainly that's not something I want to do. Now in this case, I'm going to go ahead and edit this consignment fee master record because this is a brand new installation. And I'm going to go to the Rates and Prices tab. Here under Rates and Prices, you'll notice that it identifies how to charge this consignment fee. Now this consignment fee is just plain old 35%. However, you can see here that it would be very easy to create a scaled uh, or a sliding scale consignment fee code. I could easily say where the sale price is between zero and a thousand dollars it's 35 percent but then right below I would say where it's between a thousand and a penny and ten thousand dollars maybe it's 25 percent and so forth and so on. You'll notice if I scroll this little scroll bar down how many different levels you can add in to this consignment fee code. There's actually 30 different levels that can be uh, identified here and that can be defined in this consignment fee code. It's also very important to note here that when you're setting up a new consignment fee code or buyer premium code that, or the tax definition, if you come across, across a column here that is a percent column, then if you wish to identify 35%, it would be entered in just like you see here, 35.00. 35% in this field is not 0.35. That's very important that you understand that. I'll go ahead and hit done here <clears throat> and that'll allow me to choose another master table here. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to scroll down to zip codes. Now zip codes, one of the reasons why we're simply uh, using zip codes as an example here is because the zip codes table has 40, almost 43,000 records in it. Now let's suppose that I lived in Houston, Texas. And let's suppose that I wanted to find that record uh, where Houston, Texas is. Well, I can see obviously that this list is sorted by city. And so I'm going to scroll this list down a little bit and I'm going to go down to the H's. And there's H-O-O. Uh, went too far now. I, I'm going to go back up a little ways and I'm continuing to click and you can see 
just how laborious it is to find a particular record, especially when you're dealing with a list with so many records in it. Well, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to point out two key pieces of information. First of all, you'll notice that this list has an arrowhead here in the city column. The city column has this arrowhead which indicates that this list is indeed sorted by city. But this arrowhead means more than just which column this list is sorted by. This arrowhead also indicates which column this search field is going to search on. Let's say, for instance, in the search field, I have a, uh, I have the des I'm going to type in the word Houston. Notice what happens in the list down below as I start typing. I'll type in H O U S T, and I'm already at Houston. You'll notice that we have several Houston in uh, the, in the United States. We have Houston, Delaware, and so forth. And if I scroll down just a little bit, I'll now be able to find Houston, Texas. Now, this arrowhead is currently sitting in the city column, but this arrowhead can also be located in any column that is in the list down here. For instance, I'm going to click on zip code. Now, instead of typing in Houston, now I'm going to type in the zip code that I want to search for because my arrowhead is in the zip code column. So now what I'll do is I'll simply type in, start typing in the zip code I'm looking for. 95370. And there's the zip code there for Sonora, California, where the headquarters for Auction RPM are located. Now the reason why we're spending time on this arrowhead and the search field is this. Every list everywhere in Auction RPM will always have an arrowhead and every list everywhere in Auction RPM will always have a search field. And what this means is that no matter where you are in Auction RPM, you will be able to find any piece of information in a list very quickly and very easily if you simply locate the arrowhead in the column you want to search and then type in the search parameter in the search field there. Well, that'll conclude a demonstration of what the master data area is for. I invite you to look at the different tables that are in here and different pieces of information that can be entered in and see what how they might be able to be used. If you have any questions as to what these different tables are for, you certainly are more than welcome to give us a call here at the main offices for Auction RPM here at Symmetric Software. Look forward to hearing from you and thank you for listening.